Welcome back to the Jen Julian Podcast. Welcome back and pop pop. And pop pop. This episode is brought to you by Me Undies, the softest underwear and the best underwear that you can find anywhere. Ever. Delivered right to your door. Hell yeah. To get 15% off your first pair, plus free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to Me Undies. That's M E U N D I E S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Best underwear in the whole world. OG Don't miss out. Sponsor and supporter of the podcast. Hard, hardcore supporter of, of the podcast. Um, so shouts out to them always. Uh, also, guys, uh, Wink is a wine delivery and selection service that helps mm. you pick out wine that your body doesn't even know it wants, but it does. They help you uh, by getting your flavor palette with a flavor profile quiz that you fill out, and then they send wine to your door. Uh, right now, guys, discover great wine today. Go to trywink, that's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com slash Jenna and Julian. Get $20 off your first shipment and they will cover the shipping or you can hit the link down below. And lastly, guys, the wonderful Postmates. Get food delivered to your door. This is all about delivering to your door, by the way. <laughs> uh, Don't leave. You can stay home. Yeah, so... Postmates is the delivery service for restaurants that might not have delivery options. Uh, so if you have a restaurant that you like to go to, uh, chances are Postmates will be able to pick it up for you and deliver it right to your house. Right now, use code Jenna Julian for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days of using Postmates. Just download the app and enter the code. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. One time I Postmated a fire pit from Target. So I've reached peach, peak Postmates. Mm. You know? Mm. Mm-hmm. That is peak Postmates. Yeah. Ladies. <laughs> That's good. Uh, what well, we wanted to burn stuff in the backyard. Were we Were we intoxicated? Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, wanted we to were. burn stuff in the backyard, and I was we like, oh, you guys can't burn that in the like gas fire pit that we have. Let, hold on. Let me see if Target has one, and then I Postmated it. Lit. It was worth it. Sometimes you just got to Postmate some random shit. <laughs> I've postmated the, the most obscure items from like grocery stores before. Mm-hmm. Like we go do a full shop. Then you forget, forget something. Forget one thing. So instead of running all the way back out, Postmates. It's good stuff. Well, because at that point you already have something on the stove and it's cooking and you just can't leave it on there. Or mm-hmm. It'll get ruined. Mm-hmm. I'm making a roux and I need someone else to go pick up some capers for me because I forgot. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I do. I love post ladies. <laughs> uh, I need to. Uh, I need to say I'm sorry what? for two things last podcast. What'd you do? Um, I screwed up the big hurt and the big unit. I don't know how I did that. Oh, we forgive you, after. Um, but also, I gravely apologize to all Buffalo Bills fans. I have literally not been paying the greatest attention to sports the last few years, and I totally fucked that up so what'd you fuck up they made the playoffs like oh teenage oh yeah. so my apologies to everyone who might have found that annoying i would have been annoyed too if i was a bills fan <laughs> so or a randy johnson fan listen those people go sit in those stadiums in like snow and ice and winter they love the bills you don't fuck with bills fans you know I that's why I'm apologizing. Yeah, Buffalo is the cold fucking place and and they really show out for them bills. Yeah. They that's hardcore. True. Mm-hmm. They paint their bodies. Yeah, they do paint their bodies. And they go show up shirtless in the snow. Mhm. They really out here. They're get, literally out there. Get to a man that supports you like a Buffalo Bills fan. <laughs> <laughs> that's honestly a I like that saying. What are um, we doing today? So I wanted to like I don't know. I feel like it's it's never a bad time to get a little spooky and scary. You know what I'm saying? This is Halloween. Yeah. Is it almost Halloween? <gasps> Have you thought about what you're going to be for Halloween this year? <gasps> what are you going to be? I don't know, but Jason's going to be Josie. That's funny. <laughs> no, I, I still, like, I, I keep blowing it. I keep thinking about being uh, Trisha Paytas's coffee maker. I think maybe I should do it this year. I don't get that. You just cover yourself in, like, crystals. But pink ones. That's... So obscure. Yeah, it's great. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we have anywhere to go. So I've just been. <laughs> yeah, like are we gonna go anywhere? Twelve we, hours gonna... covering myself in rhinestones, and then Do... we would just sit here and hand out candy to children. Do we have a party so... to be at? Or no. Are we just... uh. no. All right. Yeah. Anyways, 
Um, I want the last like handful of years. I haven't planned any good costume. I mean, the last cool one we did was the green beans. We, um, excuse you. We were two peas in a pod. We were both peas. We weren't two we peas weren't in a pod. Green though. beans. We were not two peas in a pod. We were two pea pods. We were two pea pods. Separate but together. We were two peas and two pods. Whatever you know. Two fast three f- pods. Wow. Too fast. Five. But one year we were Ninja Turtle doves, which was really cool. That's when I peaked. Yeah. Yeah, that's when my Halloween game peaked. When I, you basically from scratch made us not only Ninja Turtles but Ninja Turtle doves. Yeah, it was great. We we basically just wore green leotards. I made us like really pretty, beautiful turtle shells with rhinestones and shimmers and all kinds of stuff. And then we wore wings and Ninja Turtle masks. We were Ninja Turtle doves. When is Halloween? October. We have two months. Yeah. This is way too early. Whatever. I was saying it's never too like a bad time to get a little scary. I agree with that. So I I was falling down a little bit of a YouTube hole like I always do. And I was, I I feel like I've watched a fair amount of like ghost hunting shows and like ghost paranormal theme related shows. And I like to share my own bias. I do sort of buy into the idea of an EVP or an electron is an electronic voice phenomenon phenomenon, which means you record using an audio device like a a room in a house and sometimes people hear voices in in places where they can't hear them with the naked ear but when they hear them back recorded they could hear something yes um i feel like i buy into a little bit behind the idea of that and that the the energy of the ghost or whatever you can't hear with your ear but if you were to record it you could or like if you take a picture and you see an orb or like energy because i i think the ghosts are real you Mm -hmm. know Mm mm-hmm I totally buy into the idea that dogs and little kids can see ghosts and read energies and stuff like that. And I've I've had experiences where I totally have no reason to not think that it's a thing, Uh you know? It's not that I'm like, ghosts are real and y'all can fuck off. It's like, I have no reason not to believe people when they say that they've seen ghosts or had ghost experiences or stuff like that. So I was listening to some EVP recordings. I thought it'd be fun if we just sat here and just listened to some EVP recordings that talked about like what we think. So why is an EVP recording machine different than just like say an audio recorder? I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. I don't know how these people do their jobs. Well, all I know is that we staged this house up and down before we moved in just to get rid of any bad energy. Have you have you ever had any like any footage or anything like that where you went back to watch it or listen to it and it was weird like that? No. Yeah. But I you mean, went to that jail when you went to AMA. I went to a haunted jail in Charleston, AMA. Okay, you know, we don't need a- a- AMA. No, we don't no. AMA, I was there for 2 hours and I was a little bit intoxicated AMA. Julian, I'm not, no, I have no questions. Well, how do you have no questions? I went to one of the most haunted jails in the entire, one of the most because haunted buildings in the whole world. you filmed it and it answered all of my questions when I watched well, it. Well, no, some stuff didn't make the cut. Well, why don't you just... Amy. T us. Oh, I just need a Amy. No, just tell us. Well, um, the, here's what I'll say. So uh, I've like, in pretty much knowing you, and like hearing what you have to say about ghosts and, and spirits and different things like that and watching some stuff we've watched, but mainly just like talking to you about it. And also like Rome has a pretty, pretty serious account mm. of, uh, of a We ghost. did a podcast on that. Yeah. We were in a hotel room mm-hmm. all talking about ghost stories. We did that from Toronto, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so between listening to a few people, I trust accounts of their experiences with ghosts, like, and just kind of like thinking for myself like i i personally believe that that is a thing i don't like i'm i don't think that the sentence ghosts aren't real is rational i think that like there are many levels to it and like a lot of people swear by having certain experiences with things that they can't explain so because that they can't explain it like to some extent that they're real at least for that person when i was in the jail by the way, it was um, South Carolina. It was the Charleston, I forget the name of it. It was a haunted jail. And like thousands and thousands of people had died there um, in that jail. Like back, back, with, you know, in the 19, uh, whatever. I don't even, I, you can watch the, the Last Minute Trips episode. It was episode six. Um, but I forget the exact numbers of how many people died. And 
you know, what dates it was in operation or whatever. But the, when you were walking through it, because you, you walk through it with this group of people, there's a tour guide who, by the way, was wonderful. Mm-hmm. He was he was very, like, eccentric, but it, not over the top. Like, yeah. it was enough, but not quite too much. And just there's, like, this heavy feeling when you're in there. Like, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's not quite physical, but it's just, like, you sense that it's not a normal place. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just heavy is the best way I could describe it. Like, you walk into the rooms, and they're all, like, gutted out and empty and old and non-operational, but there's something there that yeah. you don't really know what it is. So I never heard a voice. I took many pictures. I took many, you know, instances of videos and tried to muster up anything that it would give us because we were really down for the experience. Yeah. But I didn't get anything physical like that mm-hmm. or audio. Um, I just felt something. And like every room we went in, it was the same feeling. And then when you exited, the feeling was gone. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the best way I could describe it. Yeah. I don't know. Just like just like a something looming. That whole episode though, like the way that that jail, like just seeing how human beings were kept, not that it's a lot better today, but like the way that human beings were kept in that space like animals. is like... It, it, Worse. it makes me physically nauseous. It's that's unbelievable. That that's I think that's also part of like the feeling I'm describing because right. you're there and you know that everything that they're telling you is pretty real. Like so this much is not suffering. a fictional. Yeah, and just terrible things. Yeah, it's it's it's. There different. was a female serial killer there was in a that female, jail. Well, she and was her a, boyfriend. Yeah, and yeah. they killed hundreds of people there. Hundreds of people. Yeah, um, and she like haunts the jail and the the the, the tour guy was like sometimes she'll swipe at men who are on the tour because she doesn't like men um but it's different like if you go to like halloween horror nights like that's all manufactured and yeah it might be scary you might get jump scared you might listen to some scary stories but just the 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 notion that you know deep down that the shit that went down in that jail is like as real as it mm-hmm. gets that's part of like what freaks you out so much yeah because well, yeah I, and i agree and that's why i feel like dogs and little kids can see ghosts is they're, they're just purely reading energy but i feel like a lot of people would agree with you in that like i can't describe a time where i've seen a full body apparition and like a you know some people do and some people have stories where they've you know seen their friends or their parents and you know they thought it was real and it was later a ghost or whatever you hear all kinds of stories Mm -hmm. but i think a lot of people would agree with you that most of their experiences are just that terrifying feeling that somehow you as a human living can pick up on that you can't describe and it's you know the temperature and the heaviness and just the overall creepiness is enough for a lot of people to be like that's a real thing yeah and it's not you tricking yourself either yeah and there is there is that aspect to it like the the psyching yourself out or the mental kind of games you play mm-hmm. on yourself when you're in an environment like that like sure i'm sure, uh, sure it plays a factor it plays a factor absolutely but yeah like just the knowledge that you have going into a place like that that yeah. humans like you and me were like not only killed but like died and rotted away and these were like the worst people too these weren't like these weren't like petty crime you know people these were like the murderers the the killers the the really bad guys well so and i think evp and a lot of ghost recording technology is a try is an attempt to try and turn that horrible feeling that you get in a space like that into some tangible evidence something concrete so we still don't know the significance of evp if it's a real thing or not like it's totally i guess open to interpretation or up to you but like it is an attempt to try and find something tangible to see if that's a thing but for me like even like bigfoot and aliens and ghosts like to Uh me if something is cross-cultural has been happening for you know a very long time around the world it's not just like an isolated this part of the united states has people that claim to see ghosts like it it knows no bounds it goes all over the world and people describe similar things to me is like I have no reason not to believe accounts from people everywhere all over the place, even before there was like, you know, an internet full of people that could meet up with each other in forums, you know? Yeah. There's like not been a part of the human race that is immune to it. Yeah. Which is interesting. The cross-cultural thing is interesting. To think yeah. About. I mean, I, I was looking at an article because we were researching for EVP recordings and I think it's, it's uh, something that's, I guess, a good thing to talk about 
Yeah, um, I want to hear some. Which is basically like why most of the the ghost shows and that those you know ghost hunter shows are are like they're manufactured and like a lot of this oh, shit that goes on. Tea. You said you had some tea for us. Well, I mean, it's like I think the argument is pretty well known and basic, and to anyone who doubts that ghosts even are real or haven't. Uh, had an experience, whether first or second hand, that's that's made them believe. What are you doing? There's a knot in my cord. You don't need to detangle the knot. I want to get knot. it out or else we can't listen to EVP. I'm a I'm Virgo. pretty sure the headphones work with a knot. I'm a Virgo. Um, so the, the electromagnetic field sensor on uh, one of the devices they use basically illuminates uh, a series of lights that correspond to how much electromagnetic charge they're detecting in a room um so like let me see like they write uh, this is an article on az central uh the problem is that something as simple as simple as a cell phone can disrupt the field and make the emf sensor light up like a christmas tree so things mm. like that they point out a lot of different like holes in their technology and for and ghost hunting shows. for ghost hunting shows okay um not to mention that they talk about how easy it is to alter audio mm. like all, i'm sure all and they trying to make a television show here. Exactly. So like, and like they, 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 this isn't like, it's fueled by one, like the potential of one outcome. Mm -hmm. Like the producers, the people on the show and the network, they all want the same outcome. They want to fucking find some ghosts, right? Because yeah. they know that's that's going to make Well, you can't have 10 it. seasons of, of them finding nothing unless they really trying to be out here making Curse of Oak Island. Oh, God, that show. And that's the tea. And another thing they talk about is, like, uh, if you do watch a ghost hunting show of any sort, you'll notice, like, and this is what they point out. This is not my words. This is their words. But um, they mention that, like, a lot of times the host will kind of prime you to experience something. Right. So they're going to say, like, they're going to tell a story about what ghosts they expect to find here or uh, what they've been uh, heard to say in the past mm -hmm. or just stories about it or maybe like did you hear that he said x and so then when you listen to it you're like okay i'm listening for it now right that's that's the kind of situation that it's they're describing like pre-programming your brain yeah it's like priming you yeah yeah to hear something yeah which like that's real too like i, I know that like it, it's almost impossible to be in a situation and this is this is when people have ghost stories mm -hmm. but other than those like small isolated instances in your own life when you're not holding a camera or an emf recorder like you're not gonna have that truly like just not you know what i mean like it's it's like um like an uninterrupted like spontaneous unexpected moment of like hearing something mm -hmm. like when you have that that to me is like that's the most credible thing that can happen, even if it's just an account of someone yeah. you trust. Like for, like when Rome told the story about her, her ghost, I like trust Rome, and she was like, "I swear to God, right. this is, this happened." And then she explained it. I was like, "Okay, I, I, that's insane. I believe that." Mm -hmm. So, I, like, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, any sort of environment where you're at, where your intent is to record it, it's never going to be as good as when you're not expecting it. For sure. Can we listen to some? Yeah. So we have. <laughs> let's see. I'm ready. We're still, you know, we still haven't fully finish this setup so i'm gonna play them off my phone um listen to the most convincing one of the most convincing evp recordings ever captured i tried to listen to this and i heard nothing yeah so and, let's listen but you uh, you just click that link and then it just plays noise yeah do you want me to read yeah should we prime the audience yeah sure tell them the story prime them. what to expect on the recording you can hear three females talking you can hear one person say hello baby then the conversation continues but you can also hear what sounds like a struggle or attack then you hear a distinct male voice the sound of a cuckoo clock oh a cuckoo clock like cuckoo mm -hmm. um at one point it sounds like the microphone is moved then the sound is clearer everyone from ghost hunters and the hotel staff was female on the night of the recording and it's important to note that there was no clock in the hotel Again, their word, right? Mm -hmm. Could have been a clock. Uh, you can hear a woman tell another person to get off her. Then there's a distinct sound of a struggle. And throughout the battle, you can hear the investigators continue their conversation. There's also a male voice asking for help throughout. I didn't hear. I listened for like, it does like a minute of this. And then it cuts out and then it comes back. And I didn't know if it was like looping or it's like just like a link. So... That clicking on a on a beat, that's the that's 
the clock that they're describing because that could if you're using a strong enough audio piece of equipment you can be detecting any sort of like sounds like a washer dryer I don't hear any talking. Yeah, I know. I told you. It's going to, yeah, it cuts out, then it comes back. And that's about as far as I made it, but I didn't hear any voices. All right. This is riveting. Right? Are they serious? I don't hear anything. Oh. That was a scary noise, but like... I should, have, I should have said, please note, this is violent and may be disturbing, so. But like, we don't know what we're hearing. Yeah, that's the, that's the wait, problem. Wait, wait, don't stop it. Hold it to the mic. I mean, it sounds violent because that's what they said we would hear. Exactly. That could be a ghost making a, a crazy grilled cheese sandwich. A literal Aries ghost making a grilled cheese sandwich for all we know. You know? Like, it's fucking scary. No question about that. Yeah, the sound of it the is... The sound is scary. It's not like anything you've heard before. Okay, I heard Hey Baby. Sounds like cats fighting. Oh. That's pretty gnarly. That sounds like feedback. No, that sounded like a scream. But like, not a human scream. It didn't sound like feedback. It didn't have that, like... I just don't know how to decipher what I'm listening to. It's just, nice. it's very scary, but like, I don't know what to make of it. Like, I have so many questions. Were, was production talking at all at any point? Were there humans talking? Or is this all straight from the recorder? Because if there were... That's a clock. This is fucking gnarly. Trying to something like could be a door. My thing is like, okay, this this article came out this year. Should we just we can, keep it going? We can stop it. Right. That's like 
Go this ahead. article came out this year. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't fucking stop it. <laughs> you have to listen to it forever, Beach. It came out this year and it was, it was detailing an account that happened in January 2007. Mm. I have a lot of thoughts about that. I have a lot of questions. Why are you writing an article about something that happened 10 years ago? That's my first question. 11 years ago. Mr. I need a clickbait title for my job today. One of the most convincing EVP recordings ever or something. Like the first question, why are you talking about recording so old? Second question, detail us exactly what's going on in that room. Yeah. Because for us, I don't know, like, were there people talking? Were there Was only... that from a television show? Yeah, I'll read from... Uh, it was from... Ghost Hunters. Mm-hmm. New, the Central New York Ghost Hunters, based in Syracuse, uh, went to. Beach. We're invited to. We're invited to investigate an old hotel in upstate New York. Beat. Central New York Ghost Hunters is one of the oldest paranormal investigation groups in the state. Beat. Um, it's it's definitely scary. Like listening to that, that's absolutely scary because yeah, it's like I, those are not human noises. If I put a, a tape recorder or whatever they use to record this yeah. in an empty room. Yeah. Listened to it back and heard that, I would shit myself. But like, there's no proof. We just have to take their word that they did that without production doing some funky shit, right? Yeah. But it's, it, I you have like, to be skeptical. Like, you have to think that it was altered, or it could have been at least, like the possibilities there. I feel like the visceral reaction that you get from that, though, is like, this is scary. Yeah. Like, I for felt sure. scared. For sure. For sure. Like the noises that you know don't come out of humans, mm-hmm. those are what freaks you out. And I definitely heard the words, hey, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Which means we got to play a ghost on our hands. Ladies, look out. And men. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I. it's listening to that is straight up freaky. And also, sorry, I didn't warn you because it was a warning that says it gets kind of graphic or whatever. But we don't know that it's graphic. That's, that's yeah, it's true. I don't know. It's definitely interesting. You want to listen to a few more? Yeah. Okay. That one was that one was a lot. It was a lot. It was just like loud. So these are a bunch of short ones. Okay. This is uh, from Refinery29.com. It's like a article that collected a bunch of them. This one's called, do you want me to prime them with what it, what yeah, it says? Yeah, I want okay. to hear the story. So this one is just, there's very short like little sentences about what they sa- say or what they sound like. Just so you know, this one says, I can't breathe around the nine second mark. Always a cool thing. EVP recorded in an empty room. That sounds like a mermaid. What does a mermaid sound like? Like they're underwater. She doesn't sound underwater. That... That's crazy. But is it just like a person that uploaded that to YouTube? How do you verify how the fuck know. do you verify? My first captured EVP with digital EVP. About 19 seconds into the video, a voice says, I'm right here with you. If you are here, can you tell me how long you've been here? That straight up sounded like him. That straight up sounded like he moved the mic away from his mouth and whispered, I'm right here with you. Right. But what I find compelling about these, though, is that even though we, like, we don't know, and that's what these the Ghost Hunter shows set out to do, is to like, all right, we're recording the whole process. You can believe, like, if that, say that was Rome, or that was me that was like, yeah. Julian, I sat in my room and recorded this. Like, I asked the space questions and then I heard this. Like, you would believe me, right? Yeah. Like, you would believe that it's not fake. Yeah. But like, I'm Try, I want to believe that these people like no one altered them or else what the fuck is the point you know what yeah, I mean yeah. I don't know if you can but like I want to believe them hmm I don't know that, that last one was just like which one where he's like are you here I'm right here like it wasn't even a different voice it sounded exactly the same um okay sorry I'm just going back to this one Okay, this one is called The Table Incident. 
Although this video features several recorded voices, the most convincing one occurs around the 104 mark when a voice seems to say, back to work with me. Mm, okay. Yep, yep. Uh, let's do it. A table. Okay, hold on. I'm going to read this. A table in the bedroom was making strange sounds. It sounded as though someone were knocking on it. I decided to set up a tape recorder. So this is just a tape recorder. You can see what it picked up. This is not an EVP recorder. Again, I don't know the technical difference between the two. All right. They're giving subtitles. They said, Kim, come back. And the person's name is Kim. This is, this is just so like, I want to live with you. I want to live with you. Ha, ha, ha. I didn't hear any of that. I'm only hearing it because I'm literally reading it. This one yeah. says, I hate you. I swear to God, I'm hearing it because I'm reading it. <laughs> I'm not hearing anything and I'm not reading anything. This one says, oh, fuck. When I, hold on. The next EVP put me off recording things for a year and a half. When I heard it, I jumped a mile, took off the headphones and stopped analyzing the tape. This is known as a class A EVP and the only type I've ever captured. Back to work with me is what they think it says. Mind you, no one was in the room with me. How do I verify any of that? I want to believe it, but how? Uh, yeah, I want to believe that, but I really don't hear that. I feel like it's that that whole everything just sounds so funky. I don't it's know. It's bizarre. I don't know about that one. All right. An EVP. A voice seems to say, get out now at the 14 second mark. Lit. Home alone, no nearby neighbors. Do you not want us here? Okay, that one. I didn't hear anything. You didn't hear that? No, what'd they say? Do you not want us here? Oh, get out now, I guess. I mean, I don't know what I they said. I heard now at the end. I heard something. It sounded creepy. It does sound creepy. Ooh, I didn't like that one. Ooh. That one got you? Ooh. Yeah, some of them get you. Like, my only thing, like, I want to give these all the light of day, but last, you know, like, last time when we went to the No Sleep subreddit and we were all taking those stories seriously only to find out that they're all fiction, <laughs> like, I don't want to be doing that again. And everyone's <laughs> like, guys, these are totally fake, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I, I do, like, I want to believe that people have the best of intentions and are like, I'm trying to capture this for real. Yeah. I, I like I hate that people do that and then they, like they create this fake culture. Like if everyone was just honest, yeah. we wouldn't have to question. Yeah. You could just use your own like do I think that sounds like a voice or not? Mm -hmm. Why do y'all got to be out here making clickbait garbage for us to just now we don't know what's real or not? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to find another one right now. You ready for this one? Mm -hmm. This one's really scary. This episode of the podcast is Julian! by Postmates <laughs> W-I-N-C and MeUndies. Now a word from our sponsors. Thank you for that. Wow, that was interesting. Guys, this episode is brought to you by Postmates. Postmates is the delivery service for restaurants and businesses that don't deliver to you. You can get things from the market, from restaurants, uh, all over town delivered right to your door. Even if it's one small item, uh, Postmates has got you covered. And right now we are offering uh, with code Jenna Julian $100 toward your free delivery credit in the first seven days of using Postmate. Uh, that adds up, so that uh, discount code will absolutely help you. Also, it'll hook you onto a new uh, app that you will just want to be using all the time. Uh, we use it. I don't know if she's coming back. Uh, we use it so much. 
Uh, even if it's just coffee in the morning, you can't, you wake up a little late, you don't have time to make coffee, just get on Postmates, get some Starbucks, whatever is around you likely going to be on Postmates. Um, and it's quick. There's no hassle. All of your Postmates, uh, couriers are really great. They're nice and they hand you your food and they say, have a wonderful day. And you say, thank you. Um, and then you tell them that when they use Postmates to use code Jen and Julian. Also guys, uh, wink. Uh, is the awesome <laughs> service that uh, helps you select wine. If you are someone who maybe doesn't know what kind of wine they like or isn't uh, quite the expert on wine, uh, Wink is there to help you out. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, it's spelled W-I-N-C. It is a great service. Basically what they do is they have a team of wine experts that help you select wine based on your flavor profile. So you take the quick palate profile quiz, which is just a number of questions about your tastes for different foods. Uh, once that you fill that out, they will start sending you wine so. to your door on a subscription basis or a one-time thing. Um, there's no membership fees. You can skip any month, cancel any time, and shipping is complimentary. Uh, and if you don't like a bottle, they send you. They'll replace it with a bottle you love. No questions asked. Uh, discover great wine today. Discover great wine today because they will help you discover it. Go to trywink, that's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com slash Jenna and Julian to get 20 bucks off your first shipment and they'll cover the shipping like they said or hit the link below. And lastly, guys, MeUndies, the softest underwear in the world. Three times softer than cotton. New designs each month. A wonderful, long-time loyal supporter of our podcast and us in general. Me, dude, MeUndies straight up com comments on my Instagram pictures. Like that, they are dope. We love them. They are family. Uh, if you've never tried MeUndies, MeUndies uh, comes out with a new print every month of underwear. They have micro modal fabric, which is three times softer than cotton, and it's delivered to you. So you don't have to go out and shop for underwear. It's just brought right to your door in a convenient little package. Um, I love their socks. They have socks. Jenna has a bralette that they make. I love their pants, their pajama pants, their underwear. I love the designs. I feel like I want to run around in my underwear all day, and I do sometimes, just because MeUndies gives me the confidence, okay? Uh, they come with a 100% satisfaction guarantee, so if you don't love them, just send them back for a full refund, and right now you get 15% off your first pair, plus free shipping, and a guarantee that you will like it when you go to MeUndies. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Thank you, sponsors. Now back to our regularly no scheduled broadcast. What? 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 Did you not like that EVP? No. That one got me. How did it know? No. <laughs> Sorry. I put on a sweatshirt so I don't have to look at you. <laughs> Wait, really? Just to put on blinders? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you have to look at me in the monitor. Look at me. I can't see you, Beach. <laughs> I is... think I hear an EVP. It sounds a lot like Julian. He, uh, Julian is the ghost that haunts this house. He's the Snapchat filter face of me. This is uh, 30 seconds into this video. Chat. That was not okay. What? Worst segue ever. I don't know. You little shit. I didn't do anything. I was just trying to play the videos on this article. I was getting my voice recorder ready to uh, see if I can capture some EVP. 30 seconds in, listen for mommy. I'm taken out of the moment. I'm out of it. My eight-year-old asked me how to, a voice recorder works, so I asked him to say something after I press record, and I would show him. So I press record and he says, I love, I love mom. But when it played back, there was another child's voice just before my son speaks. Ooh. This is the recording unedited, supposedly. I love mom. I love mom. Oh my God. Ooh. That one Ooh. scares me. I cut off the section with my, with my son speaking and slowed the tempo. So they're just listening to the mommy part. Pretty sure it says call Poppy, which is kind of spooky since the reason I got the recorder out was to see if my dad would leave a message. 
And both myself and my sister have lost children, and I'm sure it was one of them on the recording. Oh, my God. Let's hope if I call Poppy, he will leave a message and have, and I have missed him a lot since his death a year ago. Oh, my God. Jesus, fuck, that one got me. That Aww. one's creepy. Yeah, that one's creepy. That one is creepy. Shit, dude. Call Poppy. That was crazy. Like the cadence of that one got me. Because the kid is just about to start speaking and you hear like a whisper. Even if that's not what it's saying, it's saying something else. Like you, I feel like you can hear a voice and you it's scary. You can hear scary. a voice with words. Again, I feel like if I were to be a person who says ghosts are fake, they don't exist, I would have so much more to disprove than a person who believes on the contrary, right? If you, if, if like I personally think that ghosts exist and, and spirits speak uh, in all sorts of different ways and try to communicate, like there have been so many, so many accounts mm -hmm. of people hearing this shit. So if you're someone who doubts that they exist at all, you have a lot to disprove. You have a lot on your plate. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I like, I believe people when they tell me that they've had experiences and I don't need any evidence. I just believe that they felt something or heard something like that's enough for me to be like, I believe you. Yeah. I think all it takes is listening to someone you absolutely trust say, I swear up and down that this happened, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think we have one more article. This is real ghost. Real local ghost EVP recordings from the South Coast audio. Okay. This was recorded in Fall River, Massachusetts at the famous Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. This is... Yeah, beach. His voice is something to be Lizzie Borden saying something. All right, 16 seconds. Sounds like she's saying you have to poop on them. You have to poop on them. <laughs> right? Honestly, if I was a ghost and I had the ability to say shit, first of all, I'd be a Virgo ghost. And I'd just like clean up people's apartments. So if I left cabinets open, you yeah, would come out I'd and Yeah, I'd just come around and like pick up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I also wouldn't say things like call Poppy or like, I would be like, hell yeah. Well, do you think, do you just think that ghosts want to be cryptic? No. Or do you think that that's the only way that, well, like, once they're a ghost, they listen, can't speak fluent English listen, or something or whatever I don't, language? I don't know any of the the thought processes that go behind the way that people come up with this stuff, like, or, or how they think it works or what, what happens. I don't know. But I, I think that it takes a certain amount of energy, right, for the ghost to manifest into a voice or whatever. So they're, like... They only have so much energy to make, you know, a short sentence of something. It's not like they're in a corner with endless energy and can be like, "That's a good way to." That's hey, really, y'all, it's me, bitch. That's a really how's it way going? Because they're like their ability to cross through whatever in the form of limited. an audio, yeah, is limited. So they they'll say like a couple things. Just like an orb, like the the theory behind that is like they have enough energy to sort of manifest into like something for like a flash, you know what I mean? Like a flash of light or like something that moves a little bit, but they only have so much energy. I feel like that's spot on because if they were able to just be present, they wouldn't be as scary. Yeah, but I would save up all my energy to be like, do do do. And then I teeter out for like a week, you know what I mean? I feel like there's like there's a fucking ghost in my house that tries to sing the penny whistle part to my heart will go on. Listen, I feel like ghosts are just like people, right? Because they're literally people. So you have some mean ghosts, some cranky ghosts, some upset ghosts with unfinished business, and then maybe you have some funny ghosts that just want to like fuck around. You know? I think it's fair. I think it's fair. I think you would absolutely be a troll ghost. Like, you know who's the biggest troll ghost? is like Bloody Mary. The person that allegedly shows up in your mirror, like, that's a troll ghost move. Yeah, that is a troll ghost move. She's like, I died in a horrible fashion. I look like hell. You know what I'm going to do? Show up in people's fucking mirror, bitch. Yeah. That that's one scared me when ghost. I was a kid. This one was recorded in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. Uh, it was believed to be a little girl saying, hello, Tara. Or Tara. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so much going on 
So much going on. Yeah, that was a lot going on. I don't, that one was just way jumbled. I don't know. That's another one where it's like, okay, how, how many people are talking? Yeah. The South Coast is full of old mills. Some of them are still being used in new ways, but some of them are still empty and possibly haunted. The recording of a scream is believed to be the voice of someone during a tragic accident. So you say tragic accident, I say demon, bitch. That is a fucking demon. That's a demon, y'all. Sounds like a demon. It sounds like what we think a demon sounds like. It sounds like that first one that we listened to. It was like, oh, you hear an interaction. I'm like, nah, bitch, I hear like two demons fucking hanging out, and, like yeah. scratching each other's faces for fun. Yeah. <laughs> Lit. <laughs> um, I wonder if there's ever a situation where someone's recording EVP, like, but with the not without headphones on, like, so they're not monitoring it live. Yeah, I don't know. So I, that, I don't know. Because I feel like some of these people are just talking over the ghosts. Like, stop talking. Yeah, I thought that was sort of the point. It's like, like, you hear in some of them, they're like, if you're here, let me know. And then you leave, like, you know, a bunch of silence so you can go back to it and listen to silence. Or you just leave it in a room and have it record silence. Mm. And then you come back and just listen to it yeah. after the fact. You're not like, all right, y'all, let's throw my birthday party in here and, and record the whole thing in case we hear any voices. Another recording from a private home, this one in a Kushnet, a very haunted old New England town. It's believed to be saying, Stitch in Time Saves Nine. Hello? When did they say that? And also, that sounded like it was completely altered and almost part of a movie. Like, that had sound effects. It sounded like um, someone's musical interpretation of aliens hanging out. Aliens being buds. Much of the South Coast was built on sacred ground. John Collins Cemetery in North Dartmouth is very spooky. Mm. And this sound was recorded late at night there before you come back here. It just sounds like, I, old, sounds like an old radio. Yeah, dude. it's like it's a lot. This is the last one. We're recording from a private home in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. These are all Massachusetts, Boston, like it's East Coast. Scary up there. Um, has been that is being played backwards. The name Bob is allegedly being said. Why is it being played backwards? Okay, you know. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, not buy into that one. That one just just jumbled. Again, just like I will a say that the sound of whispering on tape really does creep me out. Like it creeps me out. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I agree. I think the one that got me the most was the one that says call Poppy cuz it happened you can tell like some of them you hear and it's almost too perfect. They're like, "Are you here?" And then in a weird voice and a perfect cadence after, they're like, go away. Right? <laughs> this one was like, the kid was almost talking over the ghost. Yeah. Which made it feel real because it wasn't like timed up mm. clean and perfect. But I don't know. I would love to hear if you guys have accounts uh, of spirits talking or communicating or making noise or showing up in pictures. Dude, the picture one is a creepy one. I know that there's a subreddit out there. Uh, where there are like unexplained photos or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a creepy ass subreddit. In fact, we should do a podcast on that shit. Mm. That would be crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know if you have any accounts of any creepy shit. But this was fun. It's cool to listen to. Like, there's, it's so different. Like, you'd think they're all using sort of the same technology to record silent spaces, and yet they all sound so different. Yeah. Which leaves so much room for just like, fuck shit mm -hmm. you know which goes back to what i was saying is like if you're not if you don't believe in any of this you have a lot to disprove there's mm. just so much out there 
yeah. fake or not. There's just a ton of different. Yeah, but I, I do. I feel like it's a thing, yeah. but it, it is hard to listen to some of those and be like, 100% man. Like, yeah. I don't, I just don't know. Yeah. But I do think it's cool. I like listening to it. I like listening it's to like it. It's like a too. nice, fun hole to fall down. It's creepy. I like it. It is creepy. Mm, uh, I will, some of those really did give me chills. Yeah. For sure. Um, I hope we don't have any ghosts here. No, we good. I'm scared. Well, if we do, hopefully they're trolls. I'm going to be a troll ghost. You know? Um, yeah. Like, I don't like, why do ghosts just like you hear footsteps? If I was a ghost, I would save up all of my energy to make it sound like I was walking downstairs in the loudest pair of flip flops you ever done fucking heard. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, instead of hearing just like, like footsteps, you footsteps, you heard like, but, but like that nice scary. slap of that flip flop. Or like, or like scuffing your shoes, like sliding them <laughs> onto the ground. <laughs> yeah. You know my like. No, I would manifest in the sound of bouncing a basketball as loud as I could in the house. I would. Fuck y'all. Mine would just be heavy breathing. Like really (laughs) weird, heavy breathing. That is so scary, Julian. That is so scary. If you're if you're like if you're in a a new house and you go check in the cellar to make sure things are working, you hear. That is so fucking scary. (laughs) That is just so scary, Julian. Lit. Well. What if, if, what if I was breathing, a ghost don't be that, freaked out. It's probably just my ghost. That made it sound like waxing, waxing your leg or something. Just like, ah. I'm just going to be a ghost that yells out, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine? So let's theorize for one second <laughs> that ghosts are people who have passed and are somehow in this like universe Other, yeah. parallel. They're mm-hmm. somewhere, but yeah. they can still sort of manifest energy and speak to us or appear, whatever. This generation of ghosts turns into people being like, you can wear my sweatshirt. Retweet for a follow. (laughs) (laughs) R.I.P. Vine. Responding to comments now. (laughs) (gasps) Hustle and grind. (laughs) Oh my God. So good. Can you imagine? That's probably what's going to be. Um, oh. Swipe. Wow. And with that, that'll conclude our podcast this week. Thank you guys for hanging out. We hope you have a wonderful week, a wonderful day. And uh, if you have interactions with spirits, I hope it's positive. Mm-hmm. We'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye.